四個人四大公司，你知道嗎？呢，出邊有啲公司，咁樣咯。呢個都冇錯，而家都可以出邊，但係呢個你多數出翻嚟。
Necháme, necháme, necháme pana Raptora, ať se nás natáčí, my o vás víme, jo? Hubu vám nerozbijem, nebojte. because this is a public action. It is not only for Walters. So I will say a couple of words in Czech and Barbara is the person who will be speaking in English. You know me. So that you know. Oh, yeah. We need five more minutes for hanging up a poster and the crowd is still coming. I hope you had a great trip. Give us five more minutes. Hope you're not too hungry. And we're working on one poster, which is a very important one. It says United in Diversity, which is exactly what we are tonight. And just take these five minutes and turn around. It's amazing. I just see what we are seeing right now. It's incredible.
Come closer, come closer, come closer. Make it a crowd. Now officially, good evening, Europeans. For the record, and so, so that everyone hears that, this is a public action where it is Volt, it is Pulse of Europe, it is Kaputin, and it is also people who join us because they believe in our cause. For this reason, I will be speaking in Czech. And Barbara will be speaking English, you know her already. Dobrý večer. Dobrý večer, Evropo. Good evening. Good evening, Europe. Já se jmenuji Adam Hanka a jsem předseda politické strany Volt tady v Česku, součásti celoevropského politického hnutí Volt Evropa. You all know Adam. He is the leader of Volt Czechia uh, that organized this today's and tomorrow's GA. A Volt Evropa tento víkend pořádá v Praze svoje výročí schromáždění, na které přijelo neskutečných 800 účastníků. Proto jsme se rozhodli, že uspořádáme tuto demonstraci, abychom taky ukázali, že existuje něco jako společná evropská řešení a že více Evropy může být tou správnou cestou. Excited to welcome 800 Europeans at our GA, which was uh, one of the reasons we are today here on this public action to show that common European solutions are possible. They do exist, and we stand for strong Europe. Kromě voltu se organizace této akce účastní Pus Evropy a Kaputin, tak poprosím o velký potlesk. It's not just Volt, it's also Pulse of Europe and the organization Kaputin today with us. So just keep, put your hands together to thank them. A když se otočíte, tak uvidíte, že Kaputin právě přichází. Několik organizačních drobností. 
budou projevy, které budou buď to v češtině nebo v angličtině. A my je nebudeme tlumočit. Takže pokud náhodou nebudete rozumět, tak si chyťte nějakého člověka ve fialovém tričku, aby vám to třeba přeříkal pomalejc. Uh, there will be speeches in Czech and in English, but we will not be translating them. If uh, you do not understand and would like to know what was being said, find a friend, ask around, and somebody will paraphrase it for you. Tento dav věří tomu, že národní politika začíná na, narážet na své limity a že proto, abychom překonali současné krize, tak se musíme v Evropě semknout, musíme víc spolupracovat a musíme vytvářet politiku, která je více celoevropská, politiku, která je federální. All of us here, we believe that national politics is reaching its limits. The global crises that are touching the lives of every one of us, they can only be solved by cooperation and bigger federalization of Europe. K tomuhle tématu vám dnes několik slov řeknou naši hosté. Our guests will be speaking on this topic and many others. And for the first guest, I would like to welcome the co-president of all Europa, Francesca Romana D'Antuano. Francesca, come join us on the stage. Before we let you speak, how do you feel? How do you like the crowd? <laughs> Francesca, they love you. The stage is yours. Thanks. Thanks a million. Oh my God, I'm so happy to see all of you. I. I kind of want to hide now because I'm a bit shy sometimes, but, but thank you for this warm welcoming. Um. <laughs> my friends, my colleagues, people of Czech Republic, Europeans gathered here from every corner of the continent, but also traveler, maybe migrants, whose life have conducted you here tonight, either by chance or by choice. It is a real pleasure to speak to you from this stage. My name is Francesca Romana D'Antuano. <laughs> I'm a European, born in Italy, living in Germany and loving Czech Republic. I am a woman, I'm a mom, I'm a member of the LGBTIQ plus community. And I'm the co-president of Volte Europa. The pan-European political party with presence in 30 countries around the European Union and not only. But also grassroots movements who wants to engage with citizens. It is, again, a pleasure and an honor to see all of you, to speak with all of you from the stage of this city, multi ethnic Prague, who has been the capital of an empire who has seen the horror of war, the turmoil of revolutions, who has fought for its freedom. I love Prague, I'm in love with this city. And it is a pleasure to do so, especially during these days. Because as you know, during the past days, the newly born European political community has reunited in Prague's castle, not very far away. 44 leaders from European countries have got together to speak about the energy crisis and the war in Ukraine. And as a citizen, I welcome this. I'm very happy that they did, because we need answers. We need to know what is gonna happen during the winter, but not only this winter. What is gonna happen with energy in 30 years? 
in a world that is melting as we speak. Now, as a citizen though, I'm also worried. I'm worried that this is yet another bureaucratic empty body that just speak with itself, that engages veto after veto, that speaks from a national perspective and not in a way that is really interconnected. I am worried because I know that this morning, for example, here, there has been another gathering, one that I don't support of, but still one where people came to protest the Czech government. And what I don't support is the, the far-right groups that were behind this group and what they were saying. But at the same time, I do think that when people protest, we need to hear what is their pain. And there is a lot of pain at the moment. This is a continent where the cost of living is increasing. Okay, is it better? Yeah. No. Sorry. I was saying that when people protest, we owe them to listen to what they're saying. Especially in a moment where, yeah, again, the cost of living is increasing. I see a lot of young faces in front of me, and I know that everybody is well, freaking out a bit, like how are we gonna provide for ourselves, for the people that we love? Are we gonna be able to pay for our education? What kind of life are we gonna live in this big crisis? So again, although maybe the protest that was here before is not my protest, I do think that we need to build bridges. And if the politicians... <laughs> And politicians usually, unfortunately, serve fears because in times of crisis, it's very easy to turn and look at the good old times. But there is no such thing at the good old times. There is only the future and what we can do to improve it. So my friends, my colleagues, Europeans gathered here from every corner, people who are flagging the Ukrainian flag in support of a sovereign country that has been invaded. We're here to build bridges because unfortunately we have been betrayed by all politicians. Nobody said anything when Putin started footing Crimea years ago. We should have said anything, and now we're in this situation. So what we can do is all done to each other. We're here today in this square reunited because we want to build a new pact. A pact of solidarity, of sustainability, of economic equality, of democracy, of peace, of prosperity for everybody. And to do so, we need some structural change in the system. The EU, as it is now, needs to reform. Needs to reform so that citizens like us can come together and shape the future that we want to see. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, Francesca. A jako další na programu je mluvčí pulzu Evropy Adam Trudečka. The next speaker on the stage is the spokesperson of Pulse of Europe. Welcome, Adam Trudečka. Adam, stage is yours. Thank you. And thank you all for being here in Prague. Dear Europeans, the European giant has finally woken up. 440 million citizens, 27 hearts finally beating as one. The old continent, the homeland of world's democracies, today stands as one against the Russian dictator Vladimir Putin. And Russia is losing! Slava <laughs> Ukraine! For many years, we have hoped 
that Europe could fulfill its potential. Our economy is second biggest, just after America's. But our foreign policies and our military have not yet been able to withstand the increasing dangerous world of today. Ukraine is the border of Europe. The country that Putin tried to bring into the orbit of his Russian world with an authoritarian regime and subservience to the Kremlin. But the Ukrainians did not give up. Nine years ago, they went to the Maidan and with the Ukrainian flag in their hands, they defended their freedom and fought for their democracy. They proved that they are Europeans. And the Kremlin could not have forgiven that. Russia annexed Crimea, and in order to prevent Ukraine's European path, threw it into the war in Donbass. Despite this, Ukraine continued to, free, uh, continued to hold free elections and stride for reforms. In the meantime, the struggle for the soul of Belarus began. Its citizens were also dying for democracy, and unfortunately, without success. And then the Russian world swallowed Lukashenko's weakened regime. And it wanted to swallow Ukraine as well. On February 24th, 2022, Putin launched the full invasion. But he encountered the heroic resistance of Ukrainians. They repulsed him from Kiev, Kharkiv, and now going for Kazan. Ukrainians not only reminded Europe that freedom and democracy have a great price and that they are willing to pay it. With their bravery, they were able to rally the entire continent around themselves. They thus gave Europe a real common foreign policy for the first time and they gave Europe an army. Ukrainians are fighting for the borders of Europe. Mariupol is Europe, Donetsk is Europe and Sevastopol is also Europe. But history shows us that every great moment of enthusiasm and excitement eventually fades. And we already see this around us every day. And Europe may be a giant, but it still stands on clay feet. It's not hard to trip them up. One word is enough. A magic word from the times of ancient Rome. We all know the word. Veto. Many fear its abolition. They are afraid that their decisions will be made about them without them in Brussels. And I understand that, but I ask back. Aren't you afraid that decisions about us will be made in Moscow? Yes, 27 people, 27 member states will come to the room. 26 of them want to agree and negotiate between themselves. But then the 27th shouts the word veto. He could be a Putin's ally and we know which are in the Europe Putin's allies. And then it's not about 25 outvoting 2, it's about 1 outvoting 26. Do we want one to overrule us and make it impossible for us to act? Or will Europe finally take destiny into its own hands and fully fulfill its potential? To awaken the power of one of the world's greatest economies and be able to stand alone, not only against Russia, but also against China and against everyone who will come after us the next time. We have to remind people that the idea of abolishing vetoes is neither radical nor new. On the contrary, we know that the vast majority of what the European Union does is approved uh, by a majority vote. And it is not a violent override. The European states are trying to come to an agreement at the table. We govern together with the help of consensus. So, should we, so we should ask, uh, do you want a Europe 
of agreement, of strength? Or do you want unstable Europe, living in fear that any member state of the community can paralyze it uh, uh, any time? If not, even if you are a bit Eurosceptic, if you want your national sovereignty, if you want a, your country to be strong, you want Europe to be strong, you need Europe to be strong, and then you should ask with us for the abolishment of veto. No, no veto, 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 no a jako další vystoupí člen Voltu Europa z Ukrajiny, Mikhailo Pobigaj. Let us welcome a member of Volt Ukraine, Mikhailo Pobigaj. Thank you for coming this far away and thank you for joining us in Prague tonight and also for the whole General Assembly. The stage is yours. Hello. So I think uh, you don't mind if I read my speech. Okay? It's not a problem. Uh, only, only two days have passed since I left Ukraine for the first time since February 24. But I already feel longing for my native home and I in this incredible desire to return. I devoted my whole life to the serve of my country and the protection of my people. Unfortunately, not everyone understood the threat that Ukraine faced in the war that began in 2014. We gave our love, our health, and someone of my brother gave their lives. That's why the full-scale war on February 24, still reached my home in the center of Europe and destroy it. It kills hundreds of innocent people who just want to live in a free, independent, democratic, democratic state. I feel pain, longing and anger for my Ukraine, which is fighting for the right of democratic existence with the lives of thousands of patriots who was could make the world better, but took last battle, overcoming the evil of tyranny and dictatorship. Many people are now worried about the issue of gas, tariffs, economy, but they can't imagine that one moment uh, life can become the only one value. I hold in my hands this uh, fragment of the Russian rocket that destroyed my home and may it never destroy me, never destroy school's defense. Never destroy it to defend their land, their family, their freedom. The war taught me the highest value is human life and one has the right to take it away. Hundreds of thousands of human sacrifice are the highest price paid by the Ukrainian people for the sake of democracy and the European values, for the sake of peace in Europe. Don't tell me. One minute. Oh, many people tell about the Putin. Don't tell me that Putin started that war. It wasn't his finger that pulled the trigger of the machine gun whose bullet killed an unarmed woman on the street in Bucha. He was not one who tied his hands to torture the men who were found dead on Yabloneva street in Bucha, a kilometer from my house in Irpin. This down by the Russian people who were mobilized to opposite entry democracy, Western world and Western order and Western values. You must remember that Ukraine is a shield 
that defends Europe from the darkness brought by the Russian world. And Europe is hand holding this shield. The stronger grip in the hand this holds this shield, the faster darkness will be illuminated by the light of freedom and democracy. The future is being created in united and strong Europe. And we are the ones who unite to make the world a better place. Slava Ukraini! Thank you, Yira, for your support. Thank you. Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Thank you, Mikhailo. Děkujeme. Tak, dnes jsou to silná poselství, která nesou mnoho o tom, že silná Evropa jsme silní my všichni a že společně toho dosáhneme více. The speeches today are very heavy but very true. They all have the message that strong Europe is ourselves being strong and being strong together. A právě proto bych chtěl jako našeho, jo, já vlastně řeknu ještě jednu věc, um, pro naše zahraniční hosty, omlouvám se, já jsem jim to zapomněl říct, my jsme tady totiž před poslaneckou sněmovnou parlamentu České republiky, po naší levé straně. Adam forgot to tell you, especially those of, who are not locals here, we are actually right in front of the parliament of the Czech Republic, on our, on our left, on your right side. Takže výběr tohoto místa je také symbolický, stejně jako fotka, kterou jsme předtím dělali před Českou národní bankou. This place, it's no accident, we chose it on purpose, just as we chose the place to take a picture before, as we were marching the streets in front of the Czech National Bank. Tak, and now allow me to welcome the member of European Parliament, our own Damian Bezalaga. everyone. So tomorrow I will speak a bit about Volt and the future and the election. But today I want to take you on a trip that I did to visit Kiev. Because we walk here with the Ukrainian flags, but I think it's also important to understand what's really going on. And Mikhailo has given us a very deep insight, but I want to take you on this trip that I had uh, over the Ukrainian National Day around a month ago. So basically 500 kilometers from here, you can go to the Polish city of Primzhyu. And from there, we took a train, which takes 15 hours, lights are off, your location services on your mobile phone needs to be turned off, and then you take the train, and 15 hours later, you arrive in Kiev. In Kiev, I had the chance to, because I was in a big group of parliamentarians, meet a lot of the decision makers. So we met the president of the parliament, we talked to a range of ministers, the foreign minister, and it was very impressive, because I saw that these people are fighting a war, and at the same time, they're reforming their country to become part of the European Union. The message... <laughs> the message that they gave me was, please make noise in the European Parliament so that we can do the accession talks as fast as possible. We want to be part of Europe. The next day, on Ukrainian National Day, we went to Mikhailo's hometown, we went to Bucha and we went to Irpin. And you have to imagine that you're basically taking a bus, like here, from the city center, and you just drive north for around 20 kilometers to go to a suburb. It looks like any other suburb in front of any other European city. And what we saw is that the Russians took, the Russian soldiers basically took this route from Belarus down, and then they moved towards Kiev because they wanted to get with their soldiers to Kiev. And they didn't even encounter any Ukrainian soldiers in the beginning, but they still started shooting left and right at these suburbs. And we walked down these streets where you could see houses with holes, houses which were broken down because they were mortared. And 
I couldn't believe it because it's just a road of destruction towards Kiev. And then you start talking to people. Mikhailo shared a bit of his story, but what he didn't share is that he was one night with his family, his small daughter, in the cellar of his house with 12 other families. And he was just one of many families at that time down there in the cellars. And he had to make a choice. Do I stay or do I try to get to Kiev, away from these soldiers who had already passed him? He decided with his wife together that they would leave. And then he had to make another choice. Do I take the main road or do I take the road via the forest? He decided for the forest road and that's why he's standing here today and could give this speech today to us. When we drove back, we saw hundreds of cars which were f like burned out and you've probably seen these images. And the people I talked to told us that they had white flags when they were driving on these main roads that Mikhail luckily didn't take to get back to Kiev. And now when I think about what I saw, I would say like obviously nobody of us likes war. I am sad about every Russian soldier that, that dies because it's a human life and we should value human life. I'm sad about every Ukrainian that dies because it shouldn't happen. But what I cannot stand is if people try to impose on Ukraine what their future should be. The first and most important thing that I again took with me is Ukraine decides their own destiny. The second point that I took with me is, they see their destiny in Europe. Ukraine wants to be part of the EU and they're working, sorry for the wording, but their asses off while they have an army fighting to be part of Europe. And I think we should help them in any way, which would also mean that we need to make pressure on our governments that they keep up to their promise of letting Ukraine join the European Union. And the third point is, yes, sanctions harm our economy, but I do not want any European Euro to go into weapons or tanks of the Russian army. We have to keep the sanctions up, we have to make them stronger, we have to enforce them. Let me talk one second about what we can do to deal with these sanctions. We have a lot of economic power in Europe. What we need to do is we need to bundle it, we need to work together, we need to have common funds to counter the sanction effects, to counter the war effects, so that we as Europeans can stand together. We don't need Germany to put up billions of euros alone, we need a common European response to a common European challenge. So finally, Let's make sure that we keep Ukraine on the agenda, that we don't forget that there are people there, like Mikhailo, who are like us, who want to be part of Europe, and that we give them the chance to be part of our great European Union. Thank you very much. Stava Ukraine. A jako poslední dnes vystoupí speciální člověk, protože Danča to tady celý ve skutečnosti zorganizovala. Last but not least, our speaker is a very, very special guest, Daniela, who was the one who organized the entire public action and is the reason why we're here. Give a big applause to Daniela Roishi. Hello. Uh, the topic I want to speak about is the importance of diversity and inclusion and equity in the society. You might ask yourself, why is this important? How is it related to this public action or to the current crisis? It's pretty simple. The whole concept of European Union is built on being united in diversity. We are all aware that there is diversity everywhere in the world. It is important for us to acknowledge that. But what is even more important 
is to work towards high inc quality inclusion and also to equity among the members of society. We can have society diverse as much as we want, but if we don't work with that, if we don't work towards inclusion and equity, what is the reason? Why are we even trying to like be diverse then? Why I, like, what are we want to do with the society? It's not going to function properly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why it is so important is that all of the groups of people, social groups, different ethics, different backgrounds, different genders, must feel represented. We must engage with each other as equals, because we are equal, we are human beings, all of us. And we must talk to each other, engage with each other as equal human beings. And if we take a look, for example, at many occasions, when it didn't happen, we didn't include everyone in any resolutions. For example, take a look at the pictures of any crisis resolution, of any war resolution. You will always see one type of people sitting behind those tables. You will always see a homogeneous group deciding the fate and future of all of us. Why is it always the same people? Why are the people from different backgrounds, different social groups are not there because we know something that something is good for one group of people it's not always going to be good for the other one it can be even destroy the other group of people so why it's always the same people deciding for all of us we don't want someone so to be oppressed what we want is to feel represented to have safe space for people for people to feel at home and we want to be united in diversity and we want strong growth Strong Europe! 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 Thank you everyone! A tím se naše dnešní setkání dostává do svého závěru. Myslím, že jsme si jasně řekli, že je potřeba, aby Evropa byla silnější. We are slowly getting to the end of our meeting today about what was clear. We need stronger Europe. Strong Europe! Strong Europe! A já bych chtěl ještě jednou moc poděkovat všem, kteří mají zásluhu na tom, že jsme to dneska tady mohli být. A mezi nimi hlavně Daniela a Honza Klátil. A samozřejmě ještě Petr, který tady organizoval ten stan. Uh, podium, pardon. We would like to thank the organizers that made it possible for us to be here. Daniela, Honza and Petr. Thank you very much. A za půl z Evropy samozřejmě Tomáš Pešinský. And for Paus of Europe, Tomáš Pešinský. A za Kaputina všichni dobře šli všetně Otakara Fangemunda. And for Kaputin Otakar Fangemund. Thank you. No dobře. Než se rozejdeme, tak bych vás chtěl poprosit, budu ještě říkat několik organizačních věcí. Uh, before we leave, he's going to give us some more technical and organization info. Především ty počálky vrátit. Chtěl bych vás poprosit všechny, kdo jste si půjčili evropské vlajky od Tomáše Pešinskýho, abyste je přinesli sem na pódium, aby uh, mu nezmizeli. If you borrowed European flags from Tomáš, please bring them here to the stage. A ještě jsem od fotografů dostal informaci, že chceme na pódium všechny speakery, abychom mohli udělat skupinové foto. Takže poprosím všechny speakery, aby se k nám přidali. We would like to ask all the speakers to join us on stage for a couple of photographs. Come on. Damian, Damian, please come on stage. Damian, Michael. Francesca. Francesca, do we have Francesca? 
Francesca, 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 Francesca. Okay. 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 Tak Francesca nemůže, tak se musíme vyfotit bez ní. She already left. <laughs> tak uh, fotografové, jak se máme tady postavit? A ještě bych chtěl poděkovat Policii České republiky za to, že nám tu akci pomohla tak krásně odvést, za to, že s náma šli v davu, že byli tady s náma a že zajistili naše bezpečí a hladký průběh akce. Děkujeme. We would like to thank the police of the Czech Republic to have, who helped us march and keep us safe and made it possible for us. So put your hands together for the policemen Děkujeme and the women police. who are with us. Neměli to s náma jednoduchý a odvedli perfektní práci. Děkujeme. They didn't have it easy with us, but they did an amazing job. And now, now for the vultures, we didn't book any pub for tonight. The reason being that, have a look around, there is no such pub in Prague. So yes, that's one of the plans, we'll build one. Or just make sure you have fun, follow the WhatsApp groups, and um, I'm sure that you'll find a lot of space with your friends. So, my name is Adam Hanka, I'm the president of Volt Czechia, and this is my dear Bara from Volt Czechia as well. From Volt Czechia as well. And thank you so much for marching with us. We love you! Okay.